Question 7 on the June 2005 uh, C4 paper. So we're given two vector equations of a line. Uh, I'm going to label this one R1 and this one R2, and they're given in this form where lambda and mu are parameters. Um, and it says they intersect at the point B. So it says to find the coordinates of B. So, well, if they intersect, you know that um, you can read across the i components uh, and equate the two lines, actually the two vectors. So if you read across the if you read across the top, you get um, three plus lambda i components must be equal to naught plus mu. We must also have one minus lambda is equal to four minus mu, and reading across the bottom, the k component 2 plus 4 lambda is equal to minus 2. Now this is one we're going to start with, um, because, well if we label these 1, equation 2, and equation 3, if we start with 3, that gives us that uh, it's the only equation that's only got one unknown in it. So if we solve this, 4 lambda is equal to minus 4, which implies that lambda must equal minus 1. Now, we need to just uh, put this in and find out mu and check in the other one as well. So if, uh, if we use equation 2 and our new value of lambda, we should get 1 plus 1 because lambda is uh, taking away a negative value, uh, is 4 minus mu, which gives us 2 equals 4. So let's bring this to that side and that to that side. So we get mu is 2. Um, let's just check with 3. Equation 3, if we just check... Oh, my apologies, equation 1. If we just check with equation 1, just to check that these two things work, we get the left hand side is equal to 3 minus 1 which is 2 and the right hand side is just mu which is 2 so it works. Okay so to find the equations all we need to do we know the value of lambda and mu we just have to stick it into one of these. doesn't matter which one um, so let's look at line L1 Line L1, um, what do we get? We get the column vector 3, 1, 2, plus, well, it's actually minus 1, multiplied by the direction vector of that line, minus 1, minus 1, 4, and then if we just put these together, 3 take away 1 is 2. 1 minus minus 1 is also 2, and 2 is minus 2. So we get the position vector of B. So B has coordinates 2, 2, minus 2, if you want it in a Cartesian coordinate form. OK. Now we're asked for part B, we're asked to find the value of cos theta. Now anything to do with vectors and cos theta we need to recall uh, our dot product or scalar product which says that the vector A dot with the vector B is the magnitude of A magnitude B multiplied by cosine theta. So that means we can rearrange this equation and give us cosine theta is equal to A dot B all divided by Magnitude of a multiplied by a magnitude of b. Well, that's okay. Let's. We just when we've got the vectors a and b here, actually referring to the direction vectors of our lines. So, if we call d one the direction vector of line l one, and if we call d two the direction vector of d two then we can use these. So if we find um, d1 dot d2, we're going to get 
well, with dot product, you can scale the product of these two is 1 times 1 is 1, uh, minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1, and 4 times 0 is 0. So the dot product is 2. Now, if we find the magnitude of vector d1, it's using Pythagoras' theorem in three dimensions, which is 1 squared plus the j component squared plus the k component squared, which is the root of uh, 1 plus 1 plus 16 is root 18. And the magnitude of d2 is equal to, again, triple Pythagoras, uh, 1 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 0 is equal to root 2. So putting this all together back with our scalar product formula, on the top we've got the dot product which is 2, and on the bottom we've got the magnitude of direction vector of L1 multiplied by the magnitude of direction vector L2, so we get 2 over root 36, which is 2 over 6, which is equal to 1 third. Now, if you wanted to find the angle theta, we'd just do um, inverse cosine of 1 third, but we're just asked for cosine theta here, so we just leave our answer as it is. Now, moving on to part, uh, part C, and it asks us to show that the magnitude of AB is equal to the magnitude of BC. So we just need to get our bearings a little bit. If we find the position, we know the position vector of A is 3, 1, 2, converting to column form, uh, form. The position vector of B, which goes to point B, which is not given here, but was found earlier in the question, was 2, 2, minus 2. And we've got given in this question we were given position vector of c is 5 minus 1 minus 2 so let's get those down there. Now to help us get an idea we're told that this is a key in piece of information that ABCD is a parallelogram. So to help us with this let's just get a rough idea of what's going on with these lines. Um, Let's just, let's pretend this is line L1 and this is line L2, just a rough diagram in our heads. We know that point A lies on L1, so this is point A. We know the point B is the point of intersection um, and we know the point C lies on L2. Now it may not be this way round, it's just such like that. We're also told that um, we've got a parallelogram, so we know that the line parallel to L1 must look something like that, and there must be a line parallel to L2 that looks something like that. Now, this is obviously in three-dimensional space. This diagram is just an idea of what's going on. So we want to find out about this point D here. It says to show that the magnitude of A to B is equal to the magnitude of B to C. Well, we don't actually need what I've just done for part C, but we will need it in a second. So let's just clear this out of the way. It's just to get our bearings of what's going on. Well, to get from A to B, there's a couple of ways you can do it. One way you can do it by common sense, if you want to travel from A to B, you just need to work out how you get from 3 to 2 in I components, 1 to 2 in the J components, and from 2 to minus 2 in the um, K components. Or you can do the expression that work the same way. You can do the vector position vector B minus the position vector of A. So um, to get from A to B, you must first, you must first, uh, if you wanted to get from A to B and do at some point origin here, position vector, the first thing you need to do is you need to get to the vector A and then so this is vector B, and this is vector A, 
If I want to travel from A to B, I need to go backwards from A to the origin, I need to go upwards here, so it's B minus A. Or, like I say, you can solve it by common sense, and it's the way I like to do it. So, the vector, to get from 3 to 2, you've got to go down 1. To get from 1 to 2, and it's important about the direction here, not from B to A, from A to B. To get from 1 to 2, you've got to go up by 1. And to get from 2 to minus 2, you've got to go down 4. So our, our vector A to B is minus 1, 1, minus 4. So that tells us that the magnitude of this vector is equal to triple Pythagoras minus 1 squared plus 1 squared plus minus 4 squared, which is equal to 16, this is equal to root 18. Now if we do the same thing from B to C, we could do it via vector C, the final point minus the initial point B, or like I like to do it, you can do it using your common sense to travel from B to C. To get from B to C, which is just along here, I'm going to have to go from 2 to 5 in the I direction, which is plus 3, 2 to minus 1, which is minus 3, and from minus 2 to minus 2, which they coexist in the K components. So, if I want to find the magnitude of B to C, doing triple Pythagoras, and I get 3 squared plus minus 3 squared plus 0, which is also equal to root 18. So we just need one final comment to say that the magnitude of A to B is equal to magnitude of B to C as required. Apologies for the handwriting. That leaves us just with part D now. Part D says find a position vector of point D. Well, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Basically, if we take the vector B to C in this direction, because this line and this line are parallel, otherwise it wouldn't be a parallelogram, I just need to add the vector B, C onto A, or alternatively, I could do the vector from B to A and add it onto the point C here, and it will take me to D in this direction. I'm going to go with that. The, I'm going to start at point A, so from A to D, um, is equal to is equal to A plus the vector A plus B C, which is equal to three one two which is our position vector of A, plus our B to C vector, which is 3 minus 3, 0, which is equal to 6 minus 2, 2. Now that tells us how to get from A to D, but I want to find the position vector of the point D. So the position vector is actually from the origin O. So Oh no, I've done, sorry, so this, um, my apologies, this is not A to D, this is O to D, O to D, starts at O, goes up the vector A, and then it goes from parallel to BC, so it's just going this vector along here, BC, okay, so we are finished, so the, if we wanted to write this in our J format, um, C has got um, coordinates 6 minus 2, 2, or C is given by 6i, minus 2j plus 2k and now we're finished.